<clears throat> okay, everybody, welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 369, and today we're going to be covering Beat the Crap Out of Cancer, and more specifically, the event that's going to be occurring in Connecticut, which is February 11th. So hopefully folks that watch this or see this on YouTube, they'll have an interest and they'll want to join us. Again, that's going to be February 11th, around 10 to 1. It's going to be held at um, IMBTCT, which is in Waterbury. And uh, <clears throat> if you look at, which I'll show later, a flyer, you'll see the directions on there and stuff. If you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button and we're just going to start it. The guests today are Matt Barry, a.k.a. Foxhound, and Renee Coco. Okay, growling dog. So I'm gonna be bringing them up now. Hey guys, it's happening. Oh, How are you? So this is gonna be exciting. Um, you know, much that we covered in the uh, test run was uh, <laughs> in that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I uh, got such an interest in this from the first one there. The one that you guys uh, just held uh, in New York there. And that was, uh, whoa, that was November, man? November? Yeah, that was in November. Um, yeah. Probably like second weekend, something like that. That's usually, that's the traditional date sort of to do uh, Beat the Crap Out of Cancer is in November. Just the way that it falls within the schedule of a Dog Brothers gathering year, it was a good time slot, as is February, actually, because it's, you know, it sits in those dead months that, that we don't have gatherings going on. So when you when you mention gatherings going on, when are the gatherings? So <clears throat> actually, now Canada has one uh, the same weekend that we do, but it's on the other side of the continent. So for those who can't travel all the way to Vancouver, I think it's kind of a cool thing to have an event somewhere on the East Coast as like a supplemental to the to the other beat the crap out of cancer events. But um, so Canada holds one. Now in February, uh, the tribal gathering in LA is in May. Um, the Canadian open gathering in Montreal is like usually mid July. And then the September open gathering is in LA. Um, I can't speak to the dates of the European gatherings. Uh, it's similar timing for those. Usually in about uh, April, September. Same thing. Yep. April, September. And um, Brene, they have two gatherings in Europe, or? Yes, they got the open and they have the uh, tribal. Actually, uh, in February in uh, BC, they're going to do one day open and one day is going to be the tribal, which I think is going to be a pretty cool idea. Mm. Okay. Just for folks who maybe <clears throat> don't know, what is the difference between the two? This, this question for both of you, what, what is the difference between the two? Um, the open uh, open gatherings open to everybody. So um, anybody can just go test. Yeah, open. just register and pay your dues or whatever it is, uh, and then show up and fight. Um, and then the tribal is for tribe members, so dogging up or people that uh, you know we feel would uh, would do well, would uh, give us a, a good challenge or whatnot. And um, yeah, you should the skill set. At the tribal is a lot higher. In my in my opinion, I found that some of the open gatherings were tougher because some of the people who were showing up are really want to make a name for themselves, sort of thing, or get people's attention. Mm. But uh, that's not to say that there's no tough fights at uh, tribals because uh, I definitely have had uh, a finger or two broken on one of these. Yeah, the atmosphere is really different between the tribal and the um, the open. Opens can be a little bit wild westy because of the reasons that Renee said. Is there's guys who are totally unknown quantities show up, and then um, the open. Everybody everybody knows each other for the most part, or at least knows somebody. If you know, like Renee also mentioned that you know if there's guys who maybe aren't in the tribe yet, <clears throat> but have several people vouching for them as being uh, of the right spirit and you know, the right fighting ability, you know, we'll have guys like that too. But for the most part, it's it's a little more of like a hangout with fights involved. Uh, uh, there's, so more smi there's more smiling at a tribal. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you look, when you go to a, when you go to an open, people will be like, hey, this is great. I'm so happy to be here. And as they slowly start to progress to the front of that line, you know, that smile is gone. And it's either the shared look of terror or, you know, <laughs> 
<laughs> a look of murderous thoughts. Yeah. Um, with the tribal, like I remember, like you know, uh, the time that I fought Foy, I literally like we were cracking jokes until we crossed sticks. Then it wasn't funny anymore because he broke my arm. But um, <laughs> um, you know, it was uh, it was good. You know, it's it's definitely a a very cool vibe. Mm. Wow, wow. Do you, this is for both of you, um, there's not, they're on the West Coast, Europe, Canada. Do you guys foresee something um, now that Mark Denny has moved to North Carolina, something coming on the East Coast? That'll be a mad question. <laughs> I, I, I don't see there being necessarily like a full on Dog Brothers uh, gathering on the East Coast. I mean, he can really only do these things every couple months. Um, and I think having a couple of other supplemental events, I know like the, uh, the Northwestern guys have their teep on teep on where they have like a pretty decent level of fighting and other, other people have things like that. I think having smaller regional stuff is nice. Um, but I, I don't necessarily foresee there was sort of the, uh, the tossing around of maybe having, um, a, a moving gathering like a traveling gathering as the open and it sort of because of covid it shit the bed right away but um yeah i don't i don't think that's gonna happen i think la will be will be the spot and personally that's holy ground though right so yeah for sure yeah per personally i think going to la is part of the experience like it's part mm. like traveling out there i've this is going to be my 13th year of fighting in dog brother gatherings. And um, for me, LA really has like a, a, a piece in the puzzle, I think, mm -hmm. which I can only handle it for a couple of days. Um, and then I need to leave <laughs> LA sometimes 24 hours, depending. But, yeah, I can't imagine yeah. that place has got to be a, I mean, for where I come from, that place has got to be a jungle. I can't even imagine LA. Um, it's a zoo. I've stayed all over the place in LA too, um, just from, you know, d doing most of this stuff on my own, where uh, not until the last few years have there been other guys in my area who are traveling and, and training the same way. I mean, Jeff's been around, but I, he hadn't been to LA until recently. Um, so getting Airbnbs in different parts of the city or staying in hotels, uh, I've seen almost all of the various flavors of LA and uh, mm -hmm. man, there's a lot, but saying there's a lot of flavors to LA is like saying there's a lot of flavors when you lick the seat of a bus, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a bus seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of flavors there too. So yeah. Um, I mean, just the LA airport too, man. I mean, it's gotta be like a city within a city. It's <laughs> just... LAX is pretty huge. Yeah, yeah, that's a real much. unknown for me. Is like, cause like Matt, when I first started going, I was going on my own, like no idea. Like LA is, you know, it's huge, right? Like I remember yeah. going for a run outside my uh, my hotel and having like the cops pull up to me because I was wearing like a bandana and a you know sleeveless shirt covered in tattoos, and the guy's like, "What's your problem?" I'm like, "I'm just going for a jog." Like, you know, you're running through like some crazy gang territory, right? And there's he was like, uh, he was like you're, you're, you're covered in, in tattoos and bandanas. That's uh, no one's gonna ask you where you're from. And I was like, I'm yeah. from Canada, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, man. That's the yeah. You gotta be like, what color you're wearing and where you're running around. I mean, that's yeah. That's <laughs> um, so we're actually looking at. Oh, I've spoken with some of the guys that potentially maybe doing a uh, another gathering in Toronto again. I have some, uh, I have an idea for something like that. Like, uh, I know Matt, you were there for the first one that we did. Oh yeah. And, um, yeah, there's a idea of maybe doing it outdoors somewhere. Mm. Kind of like in a wooded area sort of thing. I think it might be so, pretty cool. Instead of Montreal. Well, I, we've been talking about playing around with kind of sending it around too. Right. Yeah. Now we used to have them in, in Toronto and we moved into Montreal because it's sled's home right. base. Right. Um, but he doesn't have a school there anymore. So I was thinking that maybe just uh, at least have one. I just have it, uh, have kind of like a crazy place to have it in. You know, I had some ideas in the past of like, you know, let's do it at nighttime with a bunch of cars facing inward with just the lights and whatnot. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'd be into it. 
So just kind of like break it up a little bit, and I think it'll be a, a different environment to fight in, right? Just Very cool. For the folks who are watching, if you – okay, I'm just trying to make – I'm correct here. Um, if you're going to the uh, tribal and like um, in L.A., like generally speaking, like how many on average, you know, like how many fights do you, do you generally get in, you know, pending – you know, if it's a two day event, I shoot for five a day. Try to get five a day. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Like when you go in with the attitude of I'm going to fight five times, you're going to break your hand in the first fight <laughs> or something crazy or have, or have like a real war in the first fight. And it's <clears throat> the way that I think people could relate to thinking about how a dog brother gathering works is like, you're in a tournament but you don't get eliminated. So you're going to fight multiple times, but depending on the intensity of an early fight, that could affect things for you later on. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah for Just sure. look at that video. Um, Thick fighting is dangerous. You know? Yeah. And then too. that'll give you an idea of how many fights you'll do. Like it depends on what you count as fights too. Like if you're counting like aluminum sword fights and stuff like that, I don't, I personally don't count those as fights. I find it more of like a technical thing, which, Mm. it's not really my thing anymore. Like, I like doing it if I'm just playing around or warm-up. But mm. to me, like, I remember from when I first started, the average was three to four fights, not mm. including a night fight, right, or warm-up. And, uh, like, it, I remember getting dinged up pretty good in some of those uh, the first, first few years I was there. So definitely, you know, like, shooting for five is great. But uh, I remember having like, a couple of wars with Tom Guthrie and Hoy and, and uh, Thomas Holtman, where after three fights, like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'll, just, uh, I'll crack a beer at that point. Cause, uh, if you I think stack I your card game. with three fucking maniacs like those guys, like three is respectable. It's all you need. Yeah. It's time for beer and a lie down. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, here I am, like um, – when we used to train for these things, you're spending months trying to get the cardio up uh, and then all this other stuff. And then you go there. Like, I remember my, my very first stick fight, and I was doing all kinds of crazy cardio and, and getting myself ready. And I died those three minutes. Like, I couldn't breathe. I could, you know, I couldn't hear anything because my heart rate was so high. And I was like, holy shit, I got to relax. Because <laughs> yeah. you're just like, you know, freaking out. Yeah. Wow. So what do you, so go, going into, um, uh, you know, beat the crap out of cancer. Uh, you know, I know you started like way back, um, in the, uh, that. So why was it important to, I guess, piggyback off the dog brothers, um, way of doing things? Well, it was it kind of started as a selfish reason at first because we were looking for a training partner and we were sick and tired of fighting each other, right? Mm -hmm. So we were literally in our classroom and it's like, okay, we got the same six guys beating each other up. So then we kind of decide, okay, let's put out this mass, you know, call out to everybody to come out and hang out. And um, we ended up having like 46 people show up for that first one. And so you go from having six people to all of a sudden it's a buffet of new people that want to fight. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it just, um, I don't know, it just kind of grew from there. So it was like, it was a beautiful thing uh, to see all these people from different groups that come in. And then it kind of morphed into what it is now. But I'll tell you, the first beat the crap that we had was closer to a gathering than it was a beat the crap factor. Because, <laughs> People saw what we're doing, and then they're like, "I want to try this." Hmm. I'm not sure if I answered the question properly, but yeah, no, 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 that absolutely did. So, what do you? And uh, uh, and like the the first year uh, went well. The second year we moved to LA as well, okay. and just uh, a group. And it was to me, it was kind of a feeder program because I wanted to get more people involved. Because uh, before 2000. Uh, 2007 there's only two dog brothers in canada and that was philip and loki and meanwhile there's an explosion in the u.s and europe so um 
what better way of getting people together who want to try something than maybe, you know, make it fun. And then it kind of reminds me, you know, it reminds me of what the top dog keeps telling me. Well, you know, when, it, when I first met people and I said, hey, I want to fight you with a stick, they'd be like, no. And he'd be like, hey, try this glove on. Well, is that glove pretty good? Let me tap you in the hand. It doesn't hurt that much, does it? All right, hey, check. Put on this helmet. Oh, you look cool. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Bert, you know what? Burton, my teacher Burton would tell me, like, he was so creative in that aspect, like, just to conjole you into, like, getting out there and going and <clears> – <throat> Before you know it, you're like, I mean, Burton, these are Burton's words, of course, you know what I mean? Um, and Burton said he would have all kinds of tricks like that to get folks to go with them. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it was kind of funny the way well, they, he, they had he the Midnight like, Club at the Inosano Academy, right? Right. And he referenced that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And um, yeah, we all have friends like that, you know, like you, they'll talk to you for five minutes next to you, know, you're crossing the border doing something stupid. Um, <laughs> but, uh, like I remember when I was talking to uh, uh, Top Dog on the phone once, and he's like, "Hey, you and I should fight." And I just like said, "Yeah, okay." And I didn't even like the thought of you know, let's think this through. Didn't happen because he was just so nonchalant about it. And then I was like, for like three weeks, I was scared. Like I was like, this guy kind of terrifies me. And then I was like, okay, I'm feeling better. Uh, I'll just go pick him up at the airport. And when he saw me, I've never met this guy in my life. He's like, Renee. And he runs up and my nose touched his sternum. That's when I realized <laughs> I'm a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I think he put fear in a lot. I mean, wow. I mean, he had, some of the stories Burton has told me just um, – and this is from Burton's, again, direct from him. He said that one time, came on the roof, and before he went to overhook that piercing power thrust, Burton says to this day, he can't feel that part in his belly button. <laughs> <laughs> man, that is freaking some power, man. Uh, oh, he, yeah. he cracked through my ribs, and, uh, and I played a, well, it's kind of a mean joke. I played on Randall Wolfdog. Because I knew he was fighting him next. And I walked up and go, I just fought Eric. I think my ribs are broken. And I lifted up my shirt and it's all bruised and bloody. And I'm like, oh, you're fighting him next? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's cruel. <laughs> yeah, but it was funny. Because uh, I guess see like this look of, you know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm about to do this too. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so so uh matt what was what was the first one you went to uh beat the crap out of cancer uh my first two years of dog brothers i had fairly catastrophic injuries at at the open gathering so i didn't uh do beat the crap so the first one i did was in toronto uh it was either at fighting arts at wandering dogs um old no, school it, it would have been at um or oh, time. that bit yeah, yeah yeah that big open place yeah. yeah yeah so i did a few up there <clears throat> i was taking like 19 hour bus rides from boston zigzagging <laughs> through fucking new york stopping switching buses i'm too old for that stuff now but uh yeah i did whatever i had to to get up for those things and that yeah I, I oh yeah i kind of agree with renee like I'm into this for selfish reasons. I, I'd like to get a shot at some people other than the guys in my group between gatherings. <laughs> um, and it's fun. And beat the crap out of cancer also. You can get, for guys, you know, guys at a higher level, you can get some high-level fights, but you can also dance with a bunch of people that are at other various levels in an environment where, you know, it's important for us to be able to, um sort of pick and choose the intensity of a fight right so if i'm going to fight a person who's fairly new you know not all that physically imposing whatever beat the crap out of cancer is a place where they can put on a fence and mask and gloves and face somebody like myself maybe not somebody like renee but um and and get to kind of get out there and flow and move around without maybe getting clobbered by showing up at an open gathering if you show up in an open gathering and you walk up to me and you say, I want to fight, like, okay, well, we're going to fight, though. Yeah. You know, um, I don't, if someone's a, at an, 
I was gonna say if someone at an open comes up to me and challenges me and goes, but let's just go light. I'm gonna go. You can come to Boston and we spar twice a week. Like yeah. you can come do that there. I didn't fly to LA for a tickle fight. Um, but anyway, well, it's, it's funny that you say that because at, at um at a beat the crap, like you see, there's kids though actually have sparring matches, which is really cool to watch. Mm. Um, so I remember one time. Tyler and I took on like all the kids that were there. It was just a fun thing, right? Uh, just for fun. And then like an hour later, I got knocked out by uh, Arlen, right? Uh, <laughs> yes, you did. I was there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lights were out, man. Um, but like you said, at a gathering, I was at a gathering once when there's some people that I've never seen before and haven't really seen, seen since. And because I was kind of sitting on the sidelines, this is when Eric Burnett had with his head and we're doing selfies just you know he's got the big gash on the side of his head and one of the guys i hear him say okay um we're gonna do you know we're gonna go light and we're not gonna go to the ground and we're not gonna do this and i just turn around and go guys you're at a gathering i go there that doesn't apply here and if, and if that's the way you want to fight don't if it's not the way anybody else is going to treat you that way mm. um you know, it's a it's a definitely push yourself situation. And some people like myself do some really dumb things. You know, you have a broken finger, but you just tape it to your stick so you can keep swinging. Um, uh, you know, stupid things like that. Because I want to push my limit, and it's not for everybody. And I don't care if people like it or not. That's what I do to see what I what I'm working on works. Um, but then you know, like at, I've also had some really good uh, learning experiences at Beat the Crap where. I try something that I think I would never pull off, maybe not as fast, and then it gives me the tools to develop that into an actual, you know, uh, part of my repertoire. Were you gonna bring it to it like a to a gathering or something? Okay. All right, yep. yeah. Okay. Um, so what? Um, so I guess what? Um, as far as the stepping stone, I, I, I wonder. Uh, so folks that are watching now or will watch it when it's posted on YouTube. Um, the importance of the seven stone aspect to this, whether it's somebody just want to get their feet wet or if they perhaps wanted to be dog or if they're already dog and they're trying to get to dog candidate. Um, so the significance of the stepping stone. I think for part of it is commitment and growth, right? Because if you keep showing up, it shows a commitment that we need, you know, the, to have that moniker. But also the stepping stone, the escalation of your name shows that you're developing the skill set that the people around you are looking for, right? Like we're not looking for someone who is equal as those. We're looking for people who are going to be better and push you to another limit. Um, you know, and, and it's this weird thing. Like I remember in 2009 when we had that training camp, one of my students uh, was like, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. And it's like, okay, cool. I gave him my gear. And then he sat there at the side for like the entire day. And then at the end, he never fought. And it still bugs him to this day. <laughs> it's like, it's been 14 years. Um, again, it's just the hardest part about it, you know, like, quote, Nick, when you're done on that, that, that geo thing, is like stepping out of an airplane. The hardest thing you'll do is put dangle your feet up before you jump. And it's not for everybody. Not, not everybody needs to jump. Nor do I care if you if they do or don't. It's just that's just part of it, right? It's part of the game. The evolution, again, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Same question for me. Um, it's so I am someone who just jumped out of the airplane. Uh, I think if I knew. <laughs> then what I know now, I never would have been that stupid. You would have never jumped um, out of the first plane. Because <laughs> uh, I was jumping out of an airplane with um, a parachute that I packed by learning how to pack one on YouTube. So I just got real lucky that nothing terrible really happened to me. <clears throat> um, and we met we met at the Hyatt that day. And we're all sitting around having drinks. And you're like, you guys go to the gathering? <laughs> Yeah, I had flown out there with no plan, um, and I just met these guys at the bar, and I told them, you know, I, I have learned everything I know from this one dude on YouTube. I knew how to do uh, Heaven Six in a Wally, 
and I had been hitting a tire in my backyard, but I was there to fight this guy, Toki. And uh, so they laughed because they knew Toki and they know he could make a stranger mad enough on the internet to fly 3000 miles to fight him. And uh, luckily Renee and, and Tyler and Howie and Sean took me under wing and didn't let me, uh, didn't let me flounder about for too long, but <clears throat> um, you know, uh, if I had had a teacher, they never would have let me do that. Probably they would have stopped me uh, well before I got on that airplane. That's for sure. So, for me, I, I actually advocate people like, go ahead. If you think you can do it, let's fucking do it. Like, you don't need to have that much experience if you've got a little um, or you're dumb. Uh, but if but if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. It's very important. Um, I remember uh, Howie, it was the same gathering for because uh, he came to the training camp like three weeks prior. Mm. And then uh, <laughs> we get to L.A. and he's like, we're meeting at some park somewhere. Cause he wanted to get some extra training and he want, I walk up, I go, well, what do you want to work on? He goes, well, you know what? I'm pretty good at punching. So I just want to be able to swing the stick. I said, okay, well, feed me an angle once. He goes, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, listen, man, <laughs> let's reevaluate this for a minute. <laughs> but he still went out there. He still fought. Yeah. Some people do it that way, but I think, for most people, that's not the answer. And having, you know, to go back to your question, having something like beat the crap out of cancer is really important because it does provide that stepping stone for someone who's not ready for their first gathering or or maybe they are and they don't know it. I think that that's a big part of it too, is that, you know, for, for some guys, they need um, an experience where they're going to get, you know, experience the structure of it, um, experience being around some fights that are intense and then, also seeing like, oh, you know, I can get my feet wet a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but then, you know, if you've done beat the crap out of cancer once and you felt pretty good about it, you do a gathering, but get in there and see what, you know, see what comes of it because uh, you don't know until you know. Look and, at the evolution though in the short time, amount of time that we've been doing it, right? Like before there was stuff on YouTube and stuff you could find, but nowhere near what you can find now right like oh no when I, when I yeah when i started i didn't have access to any of what i do now as well as you know downloadable training videos between um between crafty's dbma stuff and lonely's dbma stuff there's a ton of um material out there that it's not easy to teach yourself a physical skill entirely because um it's just you know you don't know what you're doing wrong it, if you're fucking it up, you know what I mean? You could watch yourself in a mirror and if you're very self-aware, you can pick up if your angles are good or bad, but you don't know until you have another person who is knowledgeable critiquing what you're doing. In front of you and kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the same thing with sparring, like until you've got some spatial awareness and sense of distance and timing, you could do all the drills in the world, but when somebody is running at you, just throwing ones and twos, you're going to get clobbered. Yeah. yeah, that's... So, um... Especially new people. Yeah, they, I mean... I was finding it was just terrifying. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The first, when I went to there, it's much like your experience. Well, not similar to your experience, because you were together. But um, it's not that I haven't, like, put a helmet on before, but I never did with that many people looking. And I was just like, man, I go out there, I screw up. Yeah, they're really going to think like, yeah, man, what's this guy, you know, <laughs> teaching or whatever. So after the, so I'm thinking it was like a, there was a big clock there. So once in a while, I was able just to kind of see the time um, and all that. And I'm thinking, and I was dying. Like, I've, I'll admit it, I was freaking dying. Like, I'm thinking like, there's 30 seconds left. I'm like, holy crap. But you know what happened after that? I think I got it out of my system. I think it was just all that built up like anxiety and it just manifested and it was so taxing on me. I'm like, holy crap. And I'm thinking like, yeah, am I gonna be able to do any more matches? Yeah, that's another reason I, that's another reason I like the tribals because they no there's no crowds. I, I remember the first gathering I went to, there's like I don't know, a couple hundred people, if not more, sitting in the bleachers. 
mm-hmm. everybody's screaming and yelling, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? And then some dude with a camera is right in your face. <laughs> like, what's your name where you're from and it's like i'm a mouth guardian i can't speak <laughs> mouth is all dry <laughs> yeah that was like yeah just everybody watching and um i don't know if it's because i do have probably social anxiety and I'm like all these people and i'm just like oh and i'm trying to block them out and trying to focus and it, i tell you that would be the first one i admit it was initially a lot for me you know what i mean but i tell you as the day went on i kind of just you know, relaxed, and more relaxed. And then when I found out everybody was so friendly and down to earth, that too made it just so much easier. You know, I didn't see anybody like egos. And But there were some, I tell you, they were tough. You could tell there's some tough dudes there, man. <laughs> you know, no, you know, I, I tell you, man, there are definitely some tough, tough dudes there. Um, so when you, uh, why would you recommend this? Uh, or what would you say to folks that are maybe initially apprehensive? uh it, well if you know if you're apprehensive you should be because it's a dangerous activity um but at the same time you know go out there and and pick a fight with somebody who's got a bunch of experience and see what you know see what it's like i my um my guy that i brought out to la in september i let him pick his first fight or well he did a knife fight with catch dog who is going to kick you in the head and do all kinds of other stuff to you, but it's still, it's, you know, it's just a duel with, with aluminum knives. So you're sparring more or less. So I let him pick his first stick fight and uh, he was very successful. I'll just put it that way. Cause I don't want to, part of the dog brothers thing is not, you know, not disparaging somebody after the fact so that no one is afraid to get their ass kicked basically. Like it happens to all of us sometimes. So, uh, Scott was very successful in his first fight. And I was like really excited for him. I'm like, high five, man. But here's the deal. That's not happening for you again. Um, so I set him up with hard, hard fights after that. And um, for him, that was the more profound part of the experience was fighting guys that were that much better than him. So I, that's what I advocate for anybody who's new. You know, if you feel like you want to get out there um, and you want to start to mix it up this way with your colleague, find a guy who's good and mm. challenge him. You know what I mean? Um, eh, there's some guys that are less nice than others, but for the most part, you know, none of us are going to take you to a place where you're going to break. Um, you know, but we're going to take you to a place where you've never been before probably. And uh, that's where you- the beginning of the growth is, you know, that's you, you have to become uncomfortable before, any of this growth is going to occur. And that's what Renee was talking about before. The commitment isn't like, what's your commitment to dog brothers? Uh, Like we're some kind of biker gang or something. It's what's your commitment to growth? And the change of the name is part of what, you know, signifies that you've gone through that growth. And as far as I'm concerned, becoming a full dog brother is where the actual, it's not your black belt, it's your white belt. Like that's when the the growth starts. You know what I mean? Um, You just have to, you have to break out of the little shell first. The target on your back becomes a lot bigger once you're a full dog, I find. Um, you know, like when you first start, it's about this big. These people don't really know you. They don't really care. But then as soon as you get that moniker, it's like, oh, I, I heard about you or I saw you in a video. Oh, you teach those seminars. And it's like, mm-hmm. hey, you and I should fight, right? And then it, it happens quite a bit. But as far as, you know, reservations of, 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 fighting i think it's good that you do i think it's good that you're you don't look at this as, as i'm gonna go fight somebody with a stick golly gee this is gonna be so much fun like i always have a level of nerves when i'm fighting it's for me it's important um it's important because it, at least i feel safe that i'm actually thinking I'm, i might get hurt <laughs> and uh it's like even i get nervous teaching a class because i care about what i do i want to make sure that people get something out yeah. of it like, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, like Matt said, it's uh, like I remember uh, I was at a gathering in LA where all the new guys from like NoHo, uh, the NoHo guys would take the fight for them. They weren't allowed to take their own fight. So it was uh, it was really, if that would happen to me at my first one, I would probably be very unnerved by that, right? Not, not sure what's happening. <laughs> Who am I going to fight, sort of thing. So I think that was fantastic when people do that. Um, I wish I would have done that. We had a 
the first gathering here in Canada um, with one of our guys. Like I see him lining up, and I couldn't make out who he was lined up with. And then by the time I realized it was too late, he was lined up with another one of our students. These guys spar and fight all the time. And I was pissed. Because, like, they had finished, and they're like, oh, we fought on a gathering. I'm like, no, you didn't. Like, you have <laughs> 60 people here that you could have fought, and you didn't choose to do it because it's safer to pick your friend to fight. And um, that's the thing. When you don't know somebody, you have no idea what that person's going to do. Um, like, I've sure, had people who I speak with, and they're super nice, and then they get on that mat, and then they, you know, it's like, <laughs> they want to separate your head from you for the rest of your body. Which is, uh, and then half the time, it's that fear, right? Um, mm. But no, like, like for me, it, it was definitely the transformation. And, you know, there is higher consciousness through harder contact for a reason. It's, uh, mm. That's what changed, I think. I went... Like I've seen people who I train that went from stick sparring to stick fighting at one at one gathering. You know, like mm. it's, you see this evolution of like they're moving around and they're nice, and then all of a sudden you see their body uh, kind of crouch down, and you can tell that in their head they just said "fuck you," <laughs> <laughs> and they go for it. It's a beautiful thing. Jeez, man. So one thing I noticed. Um right there because i was i was really taking it all in there i was just fascinated by the whole thing there especially when i saw matter of fact i think it was i was asking you questions man like when a couple of dog cannons were out there like you could just see the intensity just man and it was like it was noticeable like it wasn't like a question mark you, you know what i mean and, and um yeah and uh and so was that the preparation for the uh, full dog or is, is that the idea there? Yeah, there were four or five guys at that event that were a candidate level. And when you're at that level, for the most part, you're uh, you're you've got your eye on one thing and it's becoming a full dog brother. Um, and so when you get those guys together, they they're going to scrap hard. They're trying to show something because. You know, there were there were a couple of full dog brothers there who these guys are trying to show, you know, <clears throat> there's a couple of guys from my group, a couple of guys from New York. Yeah, me and Steve see those guys all the time, but they want to, you know, sort of show the other group's leader where they were at because we don't see like I don't see the New York candidates all the time. I see those guys once in a while. So, you know, seeing um, Chris and John Kleinman particularly know going out there and fighting hard they're they're i wouldn't call it putting on a show but they're definitely elevating their game um you know for for them it's if they come out to the tribal in may they're going to be trying to to ascend to the next level and so they need somebody to basically nominate them for that you know to speak for them um among the full dog brothers and say like okay we we're going to watch this guy at this gathering because he's someone that if he's bringing what we expect from him, we'll promote him. Um, so they, they, they certainly have a motivation to fight hard. Uh, mm -hmm. And also that's aside from that motivation, that's just where they're at in their journey. Like if you're a jujitsu guy, um, those are competition purple belts. Like they're going to rip your legs off if they can, if they have to. Um, yeah, yeah, so right. yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see, though. It's cool to have a couple of guys uh, coming up in the groups behind behind us because it keeps number one. It keeps you on your toes when you fight one of those guys. They're not going easy. You know, they're they're out there to show you that they're good. And so mm -hmm. um, you definitely have to, as a full dog brother, <clears throat> you have to mind your p's and q's for sure when you're accepting fights from from guys like that because they're looking to elevate their name. And sometimes they're looking to elevate their name by showing up hard against the dog brother. So there it's a people, thing. There's some people who just have two modes. It's either on or off. You know, like <laughs> there's no in between. And yeah. those are great guys to have in your, in your class. Like if you think back in the day, oh, not even back in the day, but uh, Trash Dog, that guy just, he's <laughs> Like once it's on, until he runs out of steam, like it's gonna hurt. It's gonna be twenty, you know, it's gonna be well, two minutes of suck, and then yeah. thirty seconds of like, 
I'm gonna lick my wounds now. Yeah. Um, there's a uh, one of Arlo's guys. Uh, I think his name is Rain Dog out of Albuquerque. It was the same thing, and these guys are six foot four, three hundred pound monsters. Like they're coming at you. Yeah. Um, and That's you know, it's gonna make you change your game a little bit. Too. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I just I constantly think of Dancing Dog. When I'm training, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. When I'm training, if I start to like kind of, you know, wuss out on something, I just picture Vincent like swinging a stick at me. And I go, I should keep training. I should keep going. This is, uh, mm. this is a person that I am uh, not, I wouldn't say afraid of, but I have a very healthy respect for his physical abilities I'm as well as his me. physical size. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only not I'm afraid right now because I'm 3,000 miles away from him. Uh, you know, it, when we're like in the same room, it's different. It's funny because, you know, like I had this weird thing that when I meet people in my head, everybody's always the same height as me. <laughs> and it, like I never see anybody bigger or smaller than me. I always see them as the same height. And it wasn't until I had a picture taken with uh, Dogzilla where I looked like a small child. <laughs> and I was like, man. He's coming on the show. I think I'm going to try to get him on the heat. That's a big, yeah, that's a big deal. Oh, big dude. He's an interesting guy too, man. If you can get him on, yeah. let him go about some of his stories. He's a he's an interesting character. Yeah, he's in Florida now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's an East Coast guy. I saw a picture of... Uh, um, I think it was Ryan Thomas. I think yeah. the picture. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna see Ryan Thomas actually at Chad Bailey's camp. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So um, I guess Ryan's filling for somebody. I guess that couldn't go initially, and I guess he might be showing some for Bigabon. Cool. Cool. Yeah, you know, so um, oh, cool. But uh, so who at the um, one in New York? Who are the full double brothers? Just you and Steve? Uh, or yeah, myself and Steve, myself and Steve. And then, um, there was, um, Je you know, Jeff is candidate Buffalo dog. Uh, Tim from Maine was there. He's candidate guardian dog. Uh, John's candidate lone wolf. Chris is candidate chi dog. There's, uh, if I've never told you why he's candidate chi dog, I'll tell you off the air. Um, there's, uh, and a few other guys that fight in our group that are either dog or, you know, just guys that are working their way up. Didn't um, Pat come down too to New York quite a bit? Who's that? Pat. Pat. So Pat, yeah. Green Mountain and his wife were actually on a hundred day road trip um, during, dur during the period that beat the crap out of cancer fell this year. So he didn't come down. Um, I think, uh, I think probably for the next one, we'll see him. There was some, uh, their school up in Burlington um, sort of like went half, half of the people sort of went one way and, and Pat and um, Rob Farr and Amber and some other folks opened another school up there that isn't of appropriate size for beat the crap out of cancer. So the first one, when I got home in 20, uh, 2021, um, they just didn't have a, a place for it. So we didn't see them for that one. And then uh, they still had Burlington was still pretty COVID restricted too. So we did that one um, in the Boston area outdoors, actually, we just, we happened to get a good day for it. So it worked, but um, yeah, he didn't come down for this one either because like I said, he, he and his wife were on the road, but uh, I would expect to see him for the next one. Probably. Um, I have not seen Pat since I beat the crap out of cancer 2019 they had in Burlington. So he was there. So I saw him then. And then, you know, the, the pandemic and I was in California for most of it. Um, just having, having crossed paths with him, but should be, uh, should be not too long before he comes down from his mountain for, uh, for some stick fighting. He's another guy who's terrifying. Pat, um, Dean green mountain dog was my, Pakiti Tertia and uh, Kribi Krabong instructor for the first few years of my doing Dog Brothers. And uh, he's another large, agile individual. Um, he is trained under Sled Dog and Loki both. And um, Loki's guys, the Tricky Bastards, have a very, like, if you've seen, sort of if you've seen a couple of them move, 
And then you see another one, you go, oh, he trains with them kind of thing. So Pat has a very similar idiom of movement to those guys, but a very different build, uh, which I is kind of cool to see. I actually put yeah. my stock on him. That's how, uh, that's like, you know, it was just like, oh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, uh, I remember just like this thing dangling, it's all broken. And I was like, ah. Yeah. He's a, good. he's a formidable gentleman. Formidable, he's a formidable gentleman. Uh, very I nice. Part very a lot nice of these guys man. too, like they're they're when they fight, they're demons, and then they're just the nicest people I ever meet. Like yeah, okay. uh, that's one thing I said about Top Dog. I mean, for someone who's as nice as he is, you know, I can't believe how hard he hits when he fights. Like he's just, <laughs> but he's like, hey, how you doing? You know, happy happy days. And then it's just like it's not the same person, right? It's a it's a very interesting switch because for me it's, it's not like that. I I have to be in a certain mindset all the time. But for them, for them, for him, I, even for Pat, I just see him like it's it's it, the switch is on and off. Yeah, mm, that's freaking wow. So um, so do, so does, so are you happy, uh, Renee? The way the beat the crap out of cancer is going so far? Oh, absolutely. Uh, um, I kind of like that it's uh, morphing into just not just stick fighting, right? Um, seeing uh, a lot of interest from schools now that want to have an event where they can have multiple styles of fighting, yeah. which is going to be really good for us because it changes the disciplines, right? Mm -hmm. And it uh, changes the way you think in between fighting, which I think is going to be pr pretty cool to watch. And also that it's breaking away from... Um, just that one day in, in November and gives people who might not be in that area an opportunity to attend. I'm just watching it grow. You know, I think if, uh, I, again, uh, as long as people meet the criteria of it, like, yeah, go for it. You know, it's, it's not very hard now. I was a lot more strict before when we were first started this, but then I realized, you know, why it's going to a good cause. Just mm -hmm. let it happen. So, oh, so with that being said, you're open to the idea that a few can happen during a calendar year? Absolutely. Okay. I think it just for some places it just makes more sense, right? Like if you're in an area that has a lot of tournaments or lots of fights scheduled on a certain time, then it makes sense to kind of schedule around that, right? Mm, right. And listen, man, not everybody, not everybody can travel. Like I was fortunate enough that I had a... a, a Good credit and a, and a visa with a very, very high limit that allowed me to travel and go all over the place. <laughs> right? <laughs> visa um, with a very high limit. <laughs> um, but not everybody is like that, and, or not everybody wants to spend a thousand bucks for a weekend to go get, have their hand broken. They're going to have their right? hand. They'd rather just do it locally. <laughs> Jeez, that's, that, yeah, I don't want. You know, I'll get my hand broken here. I don't know if I want to spend it. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> That's like the, the when I when I broke my arm, I can never phrase that. When Kalani broke my arm, <laughs> so it was like six months of training. I was like, and that's the first time I've actually like really like was doing crazy cardio, lifting weights. Just Kalani hits really really hard, and after our fight, he ended up with a broken hand, and I ended up with a broken arm. First fight of the day. So I was like, and I think I just spent fifteen hundred bucks to fly down here plus hotel, food, and everything else. And it was still worth it. But man, you know, uh, nowadays, I would probably uh, not want to spend that kind of money. <laughs> yeah, when the kids come in the picture and what have you and all that jazz. So, okay. All right, so was that the worst injury you ever sustained, broken arm? Um, broken fingers, broken hands. I had a dent in my leg that took about a year to leave. Um, I, I, it just, there was like an actual dent in my leg where I got hit. Um, bruised ego. That was, I had, I had a bruised ego a couple times. <laughs> so I had to go um, I had to get that attended to. <laughs> um, a couple times I broke my nose, but you know, like, and it was a funny thing because I was, uh, playing with one of the, uh, the, the Euro guys and my mask came off and the dude headbutted me. And I was like, okay, <laughs> we don't do that. We haven't done, I haven't seen that here yet. 
<laughs> so you know, it's like a, um, it didn't feel very good, but again, I wasn't. I was in my own little world, thinking this is going to be cool, right? Yeah. So, uh, like I think I mentioned this before, like the Euros are on a, especially with the footwork and striking power, they're on a different level. Like they 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 really go for it. Um, but again, I think that's pretty much it for me. Um, yeah, broken arm, broken fingers. I broke, I split this finger in half, so that's why it's actually fatter than the rest of my hand. A um, couple, uh, one that was really interesting was the, my pinky finger when the actual knuckle was pointing in a different direction. Um, yeah, that's about it. Like some really good bruises. Like some really, uh, like, um, yeah. Bruises where you didn't think you'd get bruised. Yeah. How about you, Matt? Uh, oh, worst one is an easy one. I got, um, stabbed in the left ear with an aluminum trainer by a yo dog. Um, in my second gathering, we had kind of gotten in a stick clinch and I dropped my stick and did a tie like plum clinch. I pulled his head down and he had a knife like hidden on his person and he pulled it out with his left hand and went over his head. And uh, he didn't know that my mask had turned. He couldn't see because his, you know, his head was down. And I was trying to knee him. And uh, so he just jacked me straight in the ear with this thing and it split the conch of my ear, uh, split the canal and it broke my TMJ, your transmandibular joint. Um, so now it clicks when I eat, which is sweet. Uh, that was the work. And I mean, I had like a concoct, like Yo Dog is a big dude. He looks like Asian Vin Diesel. Um, he's a physical specimen too. Guy's super jacked. Uh, yeah, he, you know, it wasn't his fault. He didn't see what he was doing. He was just trying to stab me because I was, you know, trying to knee him in the face. And, uh, I remember opening my eyes. We were at Gokor Chivichian's gym in, in North Hollywood or Burbank, I think, somewhere in that area of the world. Burbank, yeah. Um, and uh, Gokor is very particular about his mats, and he's a very large, intimidating Armenian gentleman with a head like a cinder block. Um, I don't really remember it happening. I just like remember opening my eyes in the locker room, laying on a bench, and the first person I see, Gokor, is just giant granite dome appearing in front of my face. And he's like, are you all right? And I just was like, I am so sorry I bled on your mats. Like, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And he was like, it's okay. I give you a ride. I, I, I don't remember who brought me to the hospital. I went to, I went to the hospital. Um, but Dr. Dog was there at the time with his wife who's actually, I think she's a physician's assistant at his practice or whatever. And he comes in with his bag and he irrigated out my ear and he goes, okay, I might be able to stitch this. If, if I can stitch it, um, we promise not to sue me. That's what he says. And I was like, yeah, man, if you can, if I don't have to go to the hospital, because we didn't realize, I mean, I'd just been hit in the head really hard. So I didn't really <laughs> realize what was wrong yet. And my jaw hadn't started to, like it tightened up while I was at the hospital. So at the time I was like, oh, I just have a cut in my ear. Yeah, Rick, stitch it up. And as he irrigated it out, he looked down, he goes, oh, he goes, this is split like right up to the drum. And he goes, you, you gotta go have uh, have this cleaned out well and, and stitched up. And he goes, and he looks at me, he goes, and you could probably stand a CAT scan. <laughs> so it's like, okay. So they did, they gave me a CAT scan. My brain was no worse than it was when I got there. And um, they, you know, as they were stitching up my ear, my jaw started tightening up and they came in, they go, oh, hey, uh, I think your jaw's broken too. And yeah, sure enough. Um, so I got a shot of Dilaudid and a big prescription for painkillers to go home. This is now I had to fly back to Boston with this inner ear injury, uh, which going up and down in an airplane a couple of times was awesome. A nice long layover in uh in Vegas, so it was a good time. Um, that that's definitely the worst. But my hands are destroyed. I've, I'm missing like a whole knuckle off of this one for my first gathering. All my fingers just flop around or go at weird angles. So um, various bumps and bruises. Uh, I've broken a lot of ribs. 
actually. I've had a lot of months in the last 13 years where I didn't sleep good for stretches of time. But, You're doing um, a really good job selling this to people, by the way. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Come yeah. on down, sign up, fun for the whole family. <laughs> you know, it's funny because it reminds me uh, when I was in Spain uh, with uh, Benjamin. He's like, yeah, some of my students are people who do the suspensions, you know, the people who put the hooks in their body and they hang around. And uh, and I was like, yeah, that's pretty messed up. He goes, you know, what's messed up is when the hooks, you know, cut through and they break and they have to uh, stitch everybody together. But they've been teaching me how to stitch really good. So it's gatherings. I do most of the stitches. <laughs> and I was like, you're not touching me. <laughs> I'm really bad with first aid. None of my students would ever let me do first aid on them. But I sure as hell, I'm not going to have that happen either. That's pretty good. So, all right, let's talk about the uh, one in Connecticut. Uh, so, uh, who we all got coming? So, you got some. Uh, we got New York coming. Who else is coming, Matt? You got folks. You got you're bringing folks from yeah, New, York, New right? York. New York and Boston will both be uh, showing up at at Clan Strength, I think. Um, and then I know Gar uh, Candid Guardians coming down from from Maine. He'll probably ride down with us. Um, we've got some HEMA guys, uh, from a Boston, yeah, from a Boston HEMA school that are, um, coming down specifically. I think they're looking to do some, some wrestling and dagger stuff. That's, uh, Ian from Boston Armors there is their, um, he's their wrestling and dagger coach and he does harness you know, full, full plate stuff as well. Um, not, uh, not battle of the nation style stuff. None of that like human bumper cars shit. It's, uh. He works off of historical manuals and his own martial arts experience. He's, he's come and trained with my group a bit um, to do some sparring. And uh, I will absolutely vouch for the fact that the guy can, can fight. So uh, it'll be interesting to see those guys. I know some of my local, um, local grappling buddies have, have expressed some interest. So we should see, uh, we should see some folks coming down for sure from up here. And um, I know there's some similar similar rumblings in new york um but i'd love to see you know i'd love to see people i don't know um you know i'd love to see some people i've never heard of before just show up for a day of uh of you know some good hard sparring um and some ex exploration and some growth you know what i mean it's it's supposed to be kind of a lab more than anything else you know for yourself and when when these events are done we all go back out into the world to our real lives and um you take what you take what you've learned with you, and if you're smart, you're gonna apply that stuff to your real life. Whether it's um, like an actual self defense situation, obviously mm -hmm. applying the fact that you've got a set of skills and a comfort with um, with physical altercation, but just in general, like you, you learn things about yourself, and you can you can work on those things. You know, um, uh, quoting Fight Club is cliche and whatever, but how much can you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight and by fighting, you can really explore things about yourself. And I think that fighting in a dog brothers um, type environment, you know, whether it's at beat the crap out of cancer or uh, at a gathering or just, you know, a, a smaller, I know like they do um, sparring days in, in the UK and other parts of Europe where guys are able to get together and, and air some things out and really test themselves and other people. Uh, I think it's healthy for a martial artist. I, I mean, this isn't for everyone, you know, but it's for anyone. Um, that's a that's a way that I like to put it to people. I don't I obviously like telling stories of our broken bones and bruises and stuff. Yeah, uh, that 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 appeals to some people. They hear that and they're like, "Fuck yeah, like, that's badass!" Like I'd like to do something like that. And then there's other people that hear that and they're like, "Why would you want anything to do with with that kind of environment? Like that's mm -hmm. terrible." Um, for me, obviously, I think we know which, which way I leaned when I was like, whoa, stick fighting is dangerous. Like, this is a good time. Like we're going to get out there and fuck some shit up. Um, other people need a slightly different environment to be exposed to the situation so that they become comfortable in it. And without having events like beat the crap out of cancer, I think we might miss out on some people. So, um, yeah, I would really like to see some, some new people and, the other side of the coin is what we're doing there in the first place. You know, mm. um, Renee and I are both quite gleeful about the getting to beat people with a stick and I'll do it for free in a park any weekend. But um, 
having an event like beat the crap out or of cancer. Or on your OnlyFans too, right? Well, my OnlyFans is a different thing. Um, <laughs> the, the stick fighting is a whole other. Well, that's another podcast. Um, <laughs> when, uh, thank you. Uh, when it comes to raising money, there's different ways to do it, and you know, I'm not good at all of those things. I'm good at stick fighting, so I like the idea of. Uh, raising money through stick fighting and for the November event, as well as for this event, mm. um, we've sort of set the same, <clears throat> we've set the same beneficiary um, and that being classic McQueen uh, on Instagram, Michael McQueen is his name. He's going through um, chemo right now for late stage throat cancer. Uh, he's a very good guy. I've known him through social media for years uh, he extended kindness to me a long time ago when he didn't have to. And it's something that when, you know, this came up, I was more than happy to try and um, lend any influence that I have to, to help him out. Um, he's a travel photographer. He really got hosed having this happen to him right after the pandemic when he couldn't travel. And he's got other irons in the fire, but he took some major financial hits and then to wind up in a situation where, um, he's going through some real expensive uh, treatments, you know, to, to save his life and having communicated with him through the first round of chemo and watching what it physically did to him um, took a, not took a toll, but like had a, it had an impact on me. Um, and one of the major things was to not take, not take my own health and ability to, to do what I want to do for granted because you don't know, man, he's not an old guy. Um, and to have everything taken from you in one fell swoop, uh, just by, you know, the, the fickle finger of fate, it's, it's real and it's out there. So I feel like using, um, the thing I do, uh, to help raise money for somebody in that regard is, you know, that's, it's a warm fuzzy for me, I, I think. Um, and I think that yeah. it should be, you know, there's no such thing as, as altruism. I think like there's no purely selfless uh, good deed because you at least are going to feel good about the good deed you do. Um, yeah, if that right. makes sense. So, and, and that's not, uh, that's not to say there's anything wrong with that. Like you should fucking feel good if you do something nice for people. But <clears throat> when it comes to uh, having somebody who's in that situation, like having a community around you and within the community that he's a, you know, minor Instagram celebrity, um he's got a, a good name and people want to see the guy make it and uh so i just i feel like we could you know raise a little bit more money as he goes into this next round of chemo to help him out and i think that that would be um that'd be a good thing I don't know. So now i'm rambling to, and there's that uh, there's that thing too where like when we were holding these toronto events there were corporations that started reaching out and just saying hey I know you guys are raising money for cancer. We want nothing to do with you, but here's some money. <laughs> like, you know, mm -hmm. here's some and that's, that's, I'm telling you, um, uh, it's been really cool. Like, I think the biggest donation we got was like 20 or 30,000 once. Holy they actually Lord. dropped that money. And I was like, whoa, that's, you know, they're like, you guys are doing something. And, you know, I think, you, again, these people have more money than they, uh, they, more money than they can know what to do with. So it was nice that that happened. Um, so again, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, my dog's going crazy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's good that we can, you know, even send it out, you know, like just, if we can tell, if we can put it online somehow and just uh, stream it where, where someone yeah. can put some money out, that's, that's also a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I have, um, we streamed the New York event off of one of my Instagram accounts. So mm -hmm. you do something like that again, there is, uh, there's a GoFundMe page, which mm -hmm. um, is how, how we like sent in our cash donations and had anybody do um, any smaller donations that they received online that way. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that's probably what we'll do again this time is have people, you know, have people keep track. I am a terrible bookkeeper. In the end, I ended up dishing off the whole thing to Nick Merchant. Like at the day of the event, I was like, hey, Nick, here's an envelope. You're in charge of the money. Uh, 
here's where to donate it. Like, see you later. Um, so we'll, we'll try and be a little bit more organized than that this time. But um, I remember last year we, we did St. Jude's for the Boston event. And mm. uh, when I contacted them and told them what we were doing and was like, is there like, so can I set up a page through you guys? And they were like, well, we appreciate it. And you're more than welcome <laughs> to donate money, but we're not having anything to do with you like publicly. So there was that, which is part of why this year, I mean, obviously just the circumstance of Micah getting sick, but um, <laughs> this year I was like, I don't, like, we could pick one person and help them out. So um, anyway, like, uh, I remember um, like the first two years of doing people's map when, you know, I was reaching out to some celebrities and stuff and, and seeing if they want to help. Like Doug Mercado was one of like the only people that I don't know directly. But, you know, Lee mm -hmm. and I have chatted in the past, but, but yeah, whatever you need. And it's like, uh, it starts promoting it and saying, you know, whatever, it's just helping us out. And then there was, um, like, other celebrities, whether they're in the martial arts world or not, where they're like, okay, it sounds like a great idea. Uh, I'll have my secretary send you uh, how much money I want for the event. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, yeah. Uh, go fuck yourself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's a little Not that. you. Not you. So for folks who are coming, but they could just, um, <clears throat> they of course can just bring cash and get, you know, I guess we'll have a designated person to give it to, I guess. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do what we did last time. We'll have somebody up at the front, you know, with an envelope and just, mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I don't know what we'll call it. Uh, if you, if you raise, you know, if you raise more than 50 bucks, you don't have to pay any additional fee, but maybe like a $25 fighter fighter donation or something like that um, yeah. to get to get rolling and then uh, hopefully some people will be able to raise a little bit of money we got a few more weeks before the event so yeah, um, there's uh, yeah we'll, um, we'll we'll post the GoFundMe I have my um, my Instagram my Foxhound Instagram as well as my um, my personal Instagram I think still has the GoFundMe link as my link in bio so um, that's there if people want to start making um, online donations or, you know, we could do it all in cash at the events. Either way works fine. Um, but, yeah. That's what that's, we uh, uh, used to do in Toronto. We, we had a, um, like administrative kind of, you know, uh, sign up fee. Yeah. And then if someone raised money, like you said, then we would just forego it. Like they, yeah, you waive the fee. Everybody who, uh, like pretty much everybody who showed up, whether they raised money or not, would pay the fee anyway, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, we used to do t shirts and everything else, but I found that just went to a bit of a hassle because by the time I figure out the cost of t shirts and stuff and everything else, we're donating like a dollar or two for a shirt. Right. Um, but um, yeah, it's definitely the way to go. Um, and we had spectator fees as well. Um, so some of the raffles are pretty good, but I find just if you get 20 guys showing up and everybody throws in 50 bucks, you're doing well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, 50 bucks, what's, what's 50 bucks these days, right? It's like two drinks at a bar. Yeah. 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 Right, right. Half a yeah. carton of eggs. Well, what's that? It's half a carton of eggs. Half a carton of eggs. Yeah. It's like the steak. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what are you guys? What are your guys' goals as far as the growth of beat the crap out of cancer? Like, what like what would be ideally for you guys, like on an annual basis? I like the idea of having the large event where multiple cities, you know, pull it off at the same time, uh, occur in in November on that weekend. You know, yeah, that's that's been cool. how it's that's been how it's been, and I like that. And having that be the big thing, but having you know. I beat the crap out of cancer, Connecticut, for this specific cause or for that cause. Like having them pop up for causes, I think, is kind of a good thing. So if somebody wants to do, you know, if, you know, Raleigh, North Carolina wants to mm -hmm. do an event in July, cool, sweet. It, you know, having it be under the banner of beat the crap out of cancer to benefit a cancer and obviously like, eventually it'll become beat the crap out of multiple, you know, multiple different things. But, um, 
I think keeping it as beat the crap out of cancer and having, you know, proper causes arise at any time you, uh, you know, as long as it's, I, I don't think any random person should just be saying, I do beat the crap out of cancer, but as long as it falls within, you know, the community that we're a part of, I yeah. think that's kind of a cool thing, you know, discuss it with Renee as the sort of godfather of the situation and, you know, whether it's get on here and talk about the location or, or some other way to get the word out. I think, that, I think it would be kind of cool. I think the, the big thing is, you know, a, a lot of people say they want to do one until they realize the amount of work that it is because it is an insane amount of work. Um, especially when I was doing like the bigger events here, like we're talking hundreds of hours just organizing. Um, so, you know, part of the process is if I, when people say I want to do one, I would say, sure. It's just like when people say I want, they want to train with me. It's the same thing. So I was like, yeah, sure. And until they actually show an interest and, you know, go into the steps, then I know that they're actually serious. And then I can bring that to the table and say, hey, A, B, and C is thinking about it. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. And also making sure that they stay separated, separated enough that it doesn't interfere with, you know, another event going on. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, that's the one thing that kind of happened as well. You know, Matt was at the first few beat the, the crafts that were massive, you know, 60, 70 fighters, like just yeah. an insane amount of people. And then it starts to trickle down and you start, you know, again, my, uh, um, I wanted to grow so, so much that it was like, yeah, and you can, it's like Oprah and you can have a beat the crap out of cancer. And, you can have a <laughs> <beat> the <crap. laughs> and then it ends up, you know, like you start trickling down to 30 people. But then people want to do like a copycat event and it's, uh, it takes away from that. Right. It just, right. it's one of those things. So yeah, we got to be a bit more self-policing with it. And, but if someone wants to do it, then they just have to show that initiative like anything else. It's like showing up at a gathering. Yeah. You know, you can tell me how many times you want to show up until I see your feet on the mat and that stick touching another stick. Right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. That was my rant. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Um, you know, I think uh, get some momentum with the right people, you know, behind it. Yep. Or that I, and also, the, the future for me when it comes to these events, and it's something that I've always wanted to do, is to start traveling and checking some of these other events out. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, um, I just didn't have the ability to, and now I'm still kind of like healing from my injuries. So um, until I learn to walk properly again, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going to have someone, uh, you know, swing a stick at my head like I'm crazy, but not that crazy. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'd love to come down and, and hang out with you guys. Or you know, when the one in Japan was going on, I was like, how cool would that have been? Yeah. yeah. To go down there, right, or anywhere else for that matter. So I know they tried to do it in Spain a couple times. It just didn't catch on. But. You know, I've spoken to some people in Germany that are looking at maybe uh, jumping in on one. So we'll see. Yeah, there's a healthy number of Germans now. There's some. Uh, there's a, a couple of different groups I think down there. Oh, huge! Out yeah. Fighters. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think their numbers are starting to like rival close to the like the U.S. as far as the number of dogs. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. hmm. Man, so uh, what was I say there? Uh, <clears throat> what are you guys' uh, closing thoughts for the coming up in Connecticut? What you, for the uh, people who are watching this, that hopefully would give them incentive to want to go try it out or whatever. Don't let your voice in your head. <laughs> Just go ahead and do it. <laughs> Unless the voice in your head is the voice that tells you to do it, in which case, listen to that voice in your head. Yeah, just, um, you know, just have a, have a healthy conversation with that voice in your head. <laughs> and then just go anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, if you're on the fence, if, you're, if you are someone who's been training FMA or, or anything else at this point, and you, you, know, you want to get out there and mix it up with some people and um, you know, maybe donate a few bucks to a good cause, I'd love to see anybody on the East Coast that wants to show up. And I got uh, all, all of my boxing gloves and my rash guard. So if anybody wants to um, kickbox, Muay Thai, roll, whatever, I'm, I'm 
available for anybody. So, uh, and I know there's going to be plenty of other guys there that feel the same way. So mm. come on down. So folks should bring cup, gloves, helmet. Yeah. So if you, um, we are not as strict at beat the crap out of cancer as we are at a gathering. At a gathering, you need a fencing mask. You need light gloves. If you're not stupid, you need a cup. Um, I would definitely recommend, you know, whatever level of safety gear you're into. Uh, mm -hmm. I would leave the FMA condom at home, which is uh, the full padded oh, weak half little. suit thing. Uh, yeah, whatever that is, uh, leave that at home. But uh, if you, you know, if you use a weak half helmet as opposed to a fencing mask, that's fine. If you have a, mm -hmm. a HEMA mask that's a little bit, you know, beefier than a fencing mask, that's fine. Um, again, at a gathering, none of those things are acceptable, but, um, you know, bring, bring the safety gear you feel like you need. The minimum I would say is, yeah, bring a cup and a mouth guard. Um, if you don't have a mask and gloves that are acceptable, someone will have something that you mm -hmm. can use. Um, you know, sticks, swords, knives, um, staff, whatever, bring it all. I don't know. I don't know what the space is like. Um, but, uh. Mm -hmm got the uh yeah it's got enough area plus he's got a ring there so there should be no issue of having, like, yeah going out once cool yeah well that was the other thing is if there's enough space having multiple fights happen at once sometimes is kind of cool mm -hmm. um yeah. especially if there's people that are there that you know don't really don't stick fight if they just want to get in some kickboxing grappling mma type rounds um having a cage or a or a ring to go along with the open space for the weapons fighting um it's kind of cool. So, yeah, bring what you got. You know, if you're uh, there to kickbox, bring your bring your boxing gloves and your shin guards. Mm. If you're there to train MMA, bring those gloves. Uh, if you're just there to grapple, you know your your um, your spandex or your kimono or whatever. Uh, we're there for we're there for it all. So it's going to be again for those who are watching two minute rounds. Um, yeah, unless we like it, in which case it might go a little longer. Okay. Um, so the, um, the first few beat the crap, we actually did one minute rounds because the amount of people that were there. Okay, so yeah, what yeah. I found when it was one minute rounds, it was go. It was not like let's snake around for five minutes and then we'll attack each other. It was like I got a minute to do this, so let's do it. So and usually, if I had the stopwatch, I. 90% of the time, I never press the button. Um, <laughs> you see people like you look like they're swimming under, like they're fighting underwater because they've been fighting for five minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, like uh, two minutes is a is a really good time. And I like to, I kind of started switching it back to two minutes because that's how long the, the gathering fights normally are, right? Mm -hmm. So why not give yourself a, a, a time frame to mm. what it's like if you ever decide to move forward, right? Yeah. So to me, and then um, for folks that are coming that, you know, maybe haven't done one thing or another, I highly recommend that you just jump into something that maybe you haven't done before. And uh, folks that will, are doing, um, would be more happy to maybe like get you acclimated or do whatever, you know, without you getting beat on or whatever for your first experience. Yeah, you know? yeah for sure. If there are new people at this event, I mean, like if you show up, it beat the crap out of cancer and it's your first time i please introduce yourself to somebody who knows what's up whether it's myself or defender dog or or somebody like that and we will set you up with safe fights with a with a safe way to you know get your feet wet and figure out where you're at or, you know yeah. this isn't about feeding anybody to the wolves at all uh this is yeah. about you know having people have a good experience it's there's no sense for anybody in uh, in the opposite of that. So I, I would highly recommend if if you arrive at this event and you don't know anybody, start getting to know, introduce yourself to somebody, you know, and uh, you'll be taken care of. Yeah. As Dean said, he felt very comfortable, and you know, like there's no ego or bullshit there. Like usually that's what happens at a gathering. Like with same thing, like Matt said, like. When I used to hold like the bigger events, I would ask everybody who's their first day, and then I tell them, "Do not pick a fight with that person lifting their hand. Pick someone who's already fought before. Because hmm. two people who haven't fought before, that's a recipe for <laughs> disaster, huh? Yeah. For disaster. Because <laughs> um, you know, and 
you'll you'll see funny things that happen at gatherings, but I've never seen anybody get like laughed at for you know actually going out in that gathering. Sorry, I beat the crap. Actually, yeah. it'd be except for one when a guy waved another guy on and the guy. It was a. Uh, I have it on video. I'll send it to you. It was pretty spectacular. Um, but it was one of those ego checks. Uh, but for the most part, it's all about getting together, meet some people you have never uh, met before, train with someone who's never done the same thing, and then go after for a beer or glass of water or whatever you want, and just start making those long-term relationships with friends in the martial arts community, which seems to be kind of lacking these days. Yeah, I think it's more real with you guys, though. There's no facade. You know what I mean? It's... Um... Well, there can't be because we we know yeah. a lot of guys don't know they they protect their ego by not finding out but like yeah, we, yeah. that's that's gone <laughs> that's yeah gone. i mean a, i'm not gonna say i don't have an ego but there's that video that was posted on um on uh what i don't know if it's fma talk or not and the guys were in uh an mma ring and they're fighting with shields and sticks and stuff and the stuff was good like i didn't mind it but the only thing, you know, my my comment of there's too much gear is because there's a couple times where that glancing blow to the ribs with a side stick as big as that is, you would not keep going, or yeah. you would you would react to it. You wouldn't just sit there and take a giant log to the ribs and yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, and again, I've I've been on that side where firing with too much gear and then you go out and you end up with a broken arm because you're used to blocking mm -hmm. with your with your arm or trying to reach uh, out for that stick when it's, when it's flying at you at 100 miles an hour. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not shitting on those people, but I just wanted to, you know, it there is a difference about it. it, it mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I hear people saying that they want to have things being more inclusive. Well, yes, I don't disagree. But when it comes to the things that have, we have done, it's, it is just different, mm. right? And, you know, I can drive a race car around my block and think I'm pretty fast and go take it on that track and pop it up and see what happens, right? Mm. Um, so, anyway, this is my two cents. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And um, as we get close, I mean, I'm going to keep pushing and posting it in the uh, FMA groups that are local here in Massachusetts. You know, definitely Connecticut, of course, and um, that. But I'll be, um, we'll definitely be in touch, Matt. Uh, you know, and um, I mean, I'm looking forward. Um, I'm definitely going to tap in the waters, and I'm going to try out um, Buckler and Stick against either Jeff or Matt and get my butt kicked. But I'm going to come out better than I went in. <laughs> I know that. I'm going to leave better than I came, right? Uh, yeah. My stock versus knife. That's a good combination. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Jesus. My stock versus knife. <laughs> That's the recipe for broken ribs and a concussion is what that is. <clears throat> Just make sure you have the my sock. Yeah, yeah. You want the my sock in that one. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, but, uh, I heard someone, uh, they're trying to develop a safer type of my sock. And I was like, there's no such thing. No, no. Yeah, yeah. What would you make it out of? Yeah, wow. Without making it out of wood, it's not going to be protective enough to use properly as a as a shield and as a shield, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. a tool noodle with a. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, but uh, cl any uh, closing thoughts from you guys, uh, Renee? No, I think it's awesome you guys are doing this. Um, you know, well, thanks to you. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, it, it's not just me, like. It, Going back to the original ones, there's other people involved, Tyler Moore and Linda Matsumi. And, and honestly, uh, you know, as cheesy as it sounds, it's, it, it's good you have an idea, but the people around you that make that idea grow is what actually is, makes a difference, right? So I can't, I can't sit here and go, it was all me, you know? Oh, uh, you know, let me give you the special award. I, <laughs> it, it, it's, it, was a, it was a cool idea. And it, and it grew and it's growing and hey you know it's going to be cool that maybe one day as if my kids ever decide to train and someone says hey have you ever heard of beat the crap out of cancer right i think that'd be a cool thing yeah yeah well uh oh, yeah. thoughts for you matt um 
I, I barely had any coherent thoughts through this whole thing, so I'll do my best. Um, yeah, I'm just I I'm kind of uh, excited to be continuing to carry this torch a little bit more than um, you know the last two years having had a hand in uh, running the Boston event and the um, you know helping out with the New York stuff. Um, you know, I'm I'm pretty stoked to be continuing uh, continuing on the mission. And uh, also infecting as many people with the virus of full contact stick fighting as possible. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. But uh, well, I want to thank you guys for doing this, and uh, I'm looking forward to perpetuating this. You know, for the multitude of reasons, uh, one stepping stone for folks, and obviously it's a good cause raising money for you know cancer victims. You know what I mean? You can never go wrong there. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but again, I, like I, I hear I, I hear a candidate dean coming up one of these years. You know. I hear what's that? <laughs> then one of these years we're going to hear about candidate Dean Franco, you know, for uh, at a gathering. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, at, at sixty years old, Dean Franco. <laughs> hey, there's a couple of there's a couple of aged dog. gentlemen. Yeah. Sage dog started at uh, in his. Uh, I think he turned sixty. Who's that? Uh, Roger Whistle. Roger Whistle. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, I, I want to get to Canada. Period. Just to see a bunch of you guys. Um, now that things have seemed more relaxed and what have you, you know? Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. It's currently snowing behind me, so you might want to wait a couple months. Wait a couple <laughs> months before I head out there. <laughs> I get the passport renewed, but yeah, I would, I would definitely. Uh, in the meantime, though, I'm going to go to have Matt down for a seminar and just get more acclimated, uh, you know what I mean? So, like what Mark Denny says, I want to keep my IQ. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it would be cool. I'm I'm excited to do that. We'll get uh get a kind of a full contact stick fighting seminar for, for some of the local guys so that they can sort of pick up on some of the concepts and the skill sets that really translate the most. Yeah. Uh, I think that's important too. You you find that out about your colleague. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know what I mean? So just yeah, absolutely. Um but awesome. All right, well, hey. I'll be talking to you guys obviously sooner and later. So um, you guys have a good rest of the day, and uh, we'll be in touch. Outstanding. All right, great. All right, guys. Have a good night, guys. All right, guys. <clears throat> Take care. Got you here. All right. Take care. No growling. <laughs> <laughs> and it's growling. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> You'll be good, man. All right. <laughs> All right, folks, that wraps up episode 369. Yeah, so if you're in the Connecticut area, definitely check this out. It's for a great cause. You'll get some great experience. You know what I mean? You can choose who you want, do what you want. I mean, it's really that open. A bunch of great guys, so I highly recommend it um, in there. And But at any rate, I'll see you guys uh, next time. Yeah, go, Brian. Senior dog. Yeah, definitely. <laughs>